Today we talk about why you should train and not just ride. Hello legends and super legends, welcome to Velo Harmony. In today's video I want to address a kind of a kickoff video for my series of videos that will be coming on structured training and the second series will be dealing about cadence and that will be separate. So today what we're going to be talking about is why we train and not just ride. Those of you who follow the channel and watch the group rides, you've probably, you remember hearing that. This is why you train. I did a rudimentary drawing here just to show you. All things being equal, we're going to remove uh, genetic, uh, you know, talents and so forth. Um, but let's say two riders have the same talent. One is trained, one is untrained. Here's the significance of training. What I did here is I showed this untrained rider on the left and I show a fit rider that have the same capability, same talent, VO2 max, whatever being equal. And later on I will mention why that's important. For example, the base of the untrained rider, you can see I did this small box. Base is zone one and zone two. I like to lump in there. The base of a trained rider, you see from here to there. So when you're not training, you have not done the work and you just go out and want to keep up with a fit rider. This is the, this is the phrase we used to use where the, the coach would say, you will fry. And what they mean by that is your base is limited. You're on train, haven't done the work. So by the time you leave base, your base, which is zone one and zone two, this rider who is trained is still in his base. You hit zone three here, he's still in his base. You hit your zone four, he's still in his base. I mean, it's just something that I put together to give you the, the idea of the process. When you're hitting your maximum, he might just be tapping into zone three here. Let's draw the line, okay? You're already, you're at your maximum capability. He hasn't even hit zone four. So when you're going all out, he's just doing steady rides. That's what they mean by class. Like they say, world-class rider. That's, this is, this is explaining the differences. A world-class rider that is trained shows this, that mirrors this, meaning that you will be out of your capabilities long before they really start working hard. And it's the same thing. You don't need to be world class to, to, to experience that. You, you probably see guys in your ear that are really fast and you can't even hang on and you wonder how they can do that. They have invested the time. It's cycling is mostly an aerobic sport. When it's in the bank, it's in the bank. If you have not done the work, you can't expect to, to keep up. This is why most of the people I train, we start there. We find out what their goals are. And I my challenge is getting them to do the base work and this base work. You don't just do it for the period where you're starting out. Let's say you, after a long layoff, you do your base. After you've done that, you have to maintain that. That means going forward every week that you ride, every ride should have a purpose. You should have rides that are working just on your base so that you continue to build your aerobic zone. Okay. And in these zones, what will happen is as you continue to build, your power will go up. Okay, even here, as you ride more and more, this zone will get bigger, will push everything up if you train properly, meaning train and recover. That's training. It's not just going out there and hammering yourself. This is training. That completes the cycle. Now, why is that important? You might train for 30 minutes and need a day to recover when you're just starting with everything else going on in your life. You may train for three hours and need two to three days to recover. You have to find out based on what's going on with you, how you're taking care of yourself once you get home, making sure you're resting and so forth, how much time you need to complete this cycle. It doesn't mean that you don't do anything. What it means is if you're still tired from a prior workout, then you drop the effort on the next ride. And it's hard to do because a lot of people will go have a great ride and think I got to go back the next day and hammer myself again. 
You don't need to do that. There is a part of the series that I will be dealing with how much you should push, how hard you should ride, how frequently, all of that. So that will be coming. But it's important that in here, this is why I talk about why we train and not just ride. Every ride has a purpose. When you're going out, depending on the time of the year, your goals, you need to know what you plan to do that day. So even if you hook up with a group and you know you're supposed to just take it easy, you sit in. If they're going too fast, you let them go because that's your goal for that day. Then you stay with that. If your goal is to hammer yourself, then you take poles in the group and you're aggressive. Use the group to your benefit. So keep in mind that this chart represents not just cycling, but all sports. That's why you have to know your limits, and you have to know where you are, how, what kind of sensations you're receiving. That's why it's not a big deal getting dropped. If you know that day you were supposed to do only your base training and you hook up with somebody who's taking you outside of your base training, you let them go or you sit on their wheel if that's going to keep you in there. So you have to have your own goal. That's why experienced cyclists don't uh, celebrate, oh, somebody got dropped, unless you're at a comp competitive race or something. Somebody got dropped on a training ride. You don't know what their plan was. They could have just chosen to let you go because they want to take it easy and chill. Experienced riders don't go out there and chase everybody to see. They have their own purpose. You know, if they're catching up to you, that's because you're going slow. They're not chasing you. People who know what they're doing, they got their own goal for the day. They're not chasing other people, you know. So uh, you keep that in mind. You have your own focus. So this is why you must train because... If you don't train your base, it will always stay here. If you just go out and jump from here to zone five, your zone five won't be very fast because look, you're already at zone five as an untrained rider and a fit riders at zone three or even still in zone two could be. So what is the point of jumping to zone five? Build your foundation to where your base grows as you work on these other zones and create the right recipe for your training. This is why people come and sign up for coaching. You need to have the right mix. How do we get the right mix? We get to know you. We do specific testing for you. Identify your threshold. I don't believe in working with maximum heart rate because what's maximum heart rate? Did your heart stop? It, it's just not practical to try to find a maximum heart rate. We use threshold if you're training by heart rate. Or we use your FTP if you're using power meters. All of this is tested for you and your fitness. And then as this changes and grows, we go back and do more testing to get your zones. So last but not least of all, you really need to make sure I would really wouldn't say last. I'm going to put it up here first. Really? You need to make sure you identify your zones. Let me put it up here. OK. Uh, T.S. is one of them. When I when I started working with him, when I sent him his zones, he said his zones that he'd been training with had been off. Abel was another one. He got his zone from Wahoo Fitness. What he, what he'd been doing. It was off. It's hard for these programs online to know you unless they get specific numbers on you and have you perform a test. They don't do that. They, they calculate, you know, who's the developer. He doesn't know you. He doesn't know what percentages. So. You want to find your zones before you begin your training. OK, so that's the significance. And this is just the beginning in a series of videos that are going to be coming on training. I've had a lot of requests from people on the channel for different things. Somebody asked why uh, he heard from some uh, he read something. I think Lance Armstrong was saying that they're always pushing threshold. And, uh, you know, I, I put that in here in the training series to address that because yeah, Lens may have said that, but what Lens didn't tell you was how much they're investing in pushing threshold. It's not 100% of the training. There's a mix. Comes down to what I said, recipe. So make sure if you want to improve, you get structure in your training because that will take you to your goals a lot faster. With that being said, no matter what, get your K's in.